If you ever thought about building a power bank yourself, you've come to the right place. Because in this video, I'll show you how to build fast and high capacity power banks. All of the components can be easily sourced, using the links below the video of course, and all of the 3D printed parts are going to be linked down below as well. So without wasting any time, let's get started. This is the power bank I'll be building in this video. On the front face, you will find three USB-C ports. One of them is used for charging the power bank and the other two are used as outputs. All three support fast charging and the maximum combined output power is 130 watts, which is really impressive. That's probably more than 90% of USB-C wall bricks on the market. As I already mentioned, these support fast charging protocols. The power bank uses USB Quick Charge 3.0 as the input at 12 volts and 18 watts and the outputs support almost every protocol you can think of. The maximum a single port can output is 20 volts at 3.25 amps. Above these connectors you'll find an OLED display a push button switch and two LED indicators. The LEDs are used for displaying charge status, the push button is used for activating the display and the display shows voltage of each cell and the total battery charge percentage. In usual power bank terms it's a 15,000 mAh battery inside but that metric doesn't really mean anything if you don't know what the battery voltage is. The battery is built from five 18650 lithium ion cells in series, they are Samsung 30Q cells and each one has a capacity of 3000 mAh. So the maximum capacity of the whole power bank is 63 watt hours which can charge my M1 MacBook Air from 0 to 100 about one and a half times. I was in a great need of a power bank for a really long time now and I'm really happy to finally be putting this video together. In a lot of cases I even had to use my FPV drone batteries to charge my gadgets on the go. I know there will be people telling me to just go and buy one at the store. So let's get the question out of the way. Why go spend the money and the time building it yourself when you can just pick one up for 15 euros? Well, most of these cheap power banks are total crap. They often come with cheap and unreliable batteries, they often lie about the capacity and the output power just isn't cutting it. Also, a 35 euro power bank with a micro USB connector. Is this a joke? My power bank is just better in every single way and you'll just have to put up with it. I used high quality Samsung cells with all of the necessary protection circuitry and the whole thing is built using easily replaceable modules so if anything does break one day I can easily repair it. When you build the battery yourself you can choose how big or small you want it. Also it's a really fun project for anyone starting with electronics, you'll learn some things about batteries, voltage regulators, 3D modeling, 3D printing, Arduino and much more. I hope I made my point clear and I can't wait to start building this project so let's quickly go over the components that are going to be needed. These are all of the components I'll be using in this video and I know there is a lot, but don't let that scare you. I went a bit overboard with this one and not all of this is needed to build a basic power bank. The basics are simple and the main thing you'll need is a battery of course. The battery will store the energy and it will be ready to dump it into your devices on the go. Charging and discharging will be handled over USB ports. And since USB protocols are a bit complicated, we can make our life easier by using such modules which do all of the communication for us. A basic USB port works with a 5V power supply. but our modern devices have different power ratings. Introducing the first part, it's a USB fast charging module which takes 8 to 32 volts on the input and turns it into 65 watts of USB power delivery on the output. It's quite a smart board since it will negotiate the requested voltage before turning on. As I mentioned at the beginning, the maximum output voltage is 20 volts, but since it's a buck converter, your input voltage has to be higher than the output, so make sure you don't forget that if you plan to charge larger devices like a laptop in my case. Now that we got that out of the way, let's see how we are going to charge the battery inside the power bank. I'll build a pack from 18650 lithium ion cells. One cell has a maximum voltage of 4.2 volts and when you connect them in series you add the voltage. In my case a 5 cell battery will have a maximum voltage of 21 volts. If you connect multiple batteries in parallel on the other hand the voltage stays the same but the capacity grows. When you have cells connected in series it's really important to monitor the voltage of each cell. To do that and to add some more useful features we can use a so called BMS. It's short for battery management system and it will make sure our voltage stays nice and balanced while providing providing some more useful features like under voltage, overcurrent and temperature protection. Not all of them have a balancing feature so make sure you get one that has. It should be noted in the product description or in a datasheet if you decide to go with a bit more expensive option. And now that we got that out of the way, we will need something to actually charge this battery with. We need a constant current, constant voltage, 21 volt power supply with a current limiting feature. After some digging on Aliexpress, I found a perfect board for this task. It accepts 15 volts on the input pads or power over one of the USB connectors. We have both micro 
micro USB and Type C, and while testing it, the board drew 18 watts. The board has three LED indicators, which let us know the battery charge state, and if one of the fast charge protocols is in use. And that's all of the basics out of the way. I of course went a little further with this project, so I'll be adding a few more things. First, we have 3mm panel mount LED holders, which will hold external LEDs to the power bank case. This way I'll be able to see when the battery is charged, and I'll know if the battery is fast charging. I'll be using an Arduino Nano to monitor voltage of each cell, a 5V regulator to power the Arduino directly from the battery, and a push button switch to activate it. I'll use this OLED display, and I'll need a few resistors to create voltage dividers for the measuring pins. But apart from that, I'll be using a few M3 inserts, and some M3 by 25mm and M3 by 12mm hex bolts. The next thing to look at is the enclosure, but before I continue, I'd like to make a quick mention. All of the parts I'll be using in this video are linked down below. These links are affiliate, and it would help me a lot if you decide to use them. You pay the same price as if they were not affiliated, but when you do use them, I get a small commission which adds up over the months and helps me fund future videos like this one. This is the enclosure I designed for this power bank. It's made from 4 parts in total, and everything is held together with M3 bolts and M3 inserts. The bottom part holds most of the components, and on the bottom right, you'll find a place for the charge modules along with the Arduino and its power supply. The rest of the space is occupied with battery cells, and the 3D printed slots keep them safe and separated. The black part that goes on top keeps them in place, while holding the BMS board at the same time. The middle part of the case holds the LEDs, the push button switch, and the OLED display. Top piece is used to bolt everything together, and while designing the case, I wanted to make the assembly process as simple as possible. When you remove these parts and are left only with the bottom piece, you can see that everything is easily accessible both with your fingers and the soldering iron. The whole thing feels solid since I made sure the walls are thick enough and there are some supports inside that prevent flexing of the sides. If you decide to print it yourself, the 3D models are below in the description and you can download them for free. I didn't want to start the build process without explaining every single part, and there is one more thing I haven't talked about yet in detail. That's the battery charge indicator, or the OLED screen I've been talking about. We have a 5V regulator that will power the Arduino directly from the battery. The push button switch is connected in between, so we can turn the Arduino on and off. When you press the switch and hold it, the Arduino boots up, measures each cell, and displays it on the screen. When you let go, it turns off, and that's the whole thing. One thing I have to mention is that I had to use some voltage dividers, since these voltages are too high to connect directly to the Arduino. Arduino pins can tolerate a maximum of 5 volts, and this battery is well over that. Here are the values I used and you can see how everything is connected together. At first I didn't want to talk about the code since I'm mostly a hardware guy, but I'll try my best. I included some libraries, defined the display, and created a few variables for each cell. In the setup section I defined my pins and started serial, the display gets cleared on startup, and the text color is set to white. Then I take measurements from each pin and store each one into the cell ADC variable. Then each voltage gets calculated, the 5 divided by 1023 is the actual voltage on the pin, and the other part takes the divider into consideration as well. The cell voltage variable stores the exact voltage of each measuring point. Below that, I did a calibration by entering a voltage I measured and dividing it by the voltage the Arduino measured. This works, but if I wanted to be more precise, I could measure each pin a couple of times and display the average. Below all of that, I calculate the battery percentage as well, and then display everything on screen. The cell voltages are displayed for 700 milliseconds, as well as the battery percentage. I'll start the build by first preparing all of the plastic parts. I'll install all of the M3 inserts into their holes and check if everything is aligned correctly. I'll clean up the parts once more and I'll try to assemble everything just to test it one last time. The two fast charge modules will fit perfectly, but in order to close this all up, I'll have to desolder the micro USB connector from the battery charger. A quick transition to the microscope, I'll heat it with some flux and hot air, remove the connector, clean it up, and it's done. Before I secure the modules inside the case, I'd like to get this LED sorted out as well. The red LED tells us when the battery is charging, and when it shuts off, we will know that the battery is charged. The green LED lets us know that one of the fast charge protocols was triggered, and those are the two I'd like to see from the outside of the case. I'll remove both SMD LEDs, and I'll solder some thin wires to their pads, so I can solder my 3mm LEDs to them later. And finally, let's get the modules installed inside the case. I use some super glue to secure them, and while the glue is drying, let's go steal some batteries. Some of you may already know that I have this random battery laying around, so I'll steal 5 cells from it. The cells have to be at the same voltage, and after checking if they're all good, I'd like to replace these heat shrinks, since they're are a bit damaged. I couldn't find any 18650 heat shrinks locally, and AliExpress is taking too long at this time of the year, so I'll have to use this heat shrink, which is a bit larger than it should be, but it will still work. I'll install the batteries inside their slots, and I'll secure them with the top black piece. Then I'll glue the BMS board to the top, and while that's drying, I'll remove the headers from the 5V regulator, the Arduino, and the OLED display. I'll secure the voltage regulator and the Arduino to the black part, but since this time there are no flat faces going up against each other, I'll use some hot glue instead, since it will hold them in place much better. And 
while that's cooling, I'll solder some wires to the OLED display. Now is a good time to connect these cells in series. And get ready to roast me in the comments since I'll be soldering them together. This is a budget friendly YouTube channel and I don't have a spot welder yet, so I'll have to do it this way. I already soldered a lot of them and never had any problems. The most important thing is that you don't heat them up too much. In this picture you can see how I connected them together and you can see which points are cell 1, cell 2, etc. I'll connect the BMS to the battery now and the thin wires coming from the connector are balanced leads. You connect the black one to the ground of the battery pack, B1 to cell 1, B2 to cell 2, B3 to cell 3, etc. After all of them are connected, I'd like to go through all of the pins on the BMS to check if everything is connected right. Since it is, I'll take a moment to clean up my desk because the mess is growing stronger and stronger and after everything is cleaned up, I have one more thing to connect on the BMS and that's the B- pad. It will be connected to the ground terminal of the whole battery pack and the P- pad on the BMS will be used for charging and discharging the battery pack later. The first thing I'll connect to the battery is the USB battery charger. The plus pad goes to battery positive and the ground pad goes to the P- pad on the BMS. At this point I'd like to test the charger as well, but before I can do that, I'll have to solder the two LEDs in place so I know what's going on. After connecting a USB-C cable to the charger, we can see that the battery is charging at 15 watts, which is perfect. We are not getting the full 18 watts since my battery was almost fully charged and the current drops by the end of the charge cycle. Now we need to connect just a few more things and we are almost done. Let's get started by connecting these two modules to the battery. They will draw a bit more current than the rest of the components, so make sure to use some thicker wires. And here I realize something. It will be harder to connect the Arduino up if I have two thick wires going over it. So change of plans. I'll connect the Arduino first and then the thick wires to the quick charge modules. We need power for all of this to work, so I'll connect one more wire to the positive terminal of the battery. This wire will be connected to one side of the push button switch and the other side of the push button switch goes to the input of the voltage regulator. The ground pin of the regulator goes to the P- pad on the BMS and the output of the regulator goes to the Arduino's V in pin. I did connect it to the V in pad right here, but later I had to desolder it and move it to the 5 volt pad because the voltage reference wasn't stable and my ADCs weren't getting precise readings. Before connecting it to the Arduino, I encourage you to test the output voltage just to make sure everything is right. And it looks like we have exactly 5 volts on the output, which is awesome. This 5 volts connects to the Arduino and the LED inside the push button switch. And I connected the switch without mounting it to the middle piece so that I can test everything first. Everything was alright, but there was an issue with the switch. The first time I connected its LED to power, it shined very bright and now it shines much dimmer. I was thinking that I maybe overvolted it, it is rated up to 6 volts and I did connect it to exactly 5. My recommendation would be to get a 12 volt switch instead, since this one broke. It will still function, but the LED won't work, and I sadly don't have any replacements on hand. Now we can connect the OLED display. Ground goes to ground, VCC to 5V, SEL to pin A5, and SDA to pin A4. After connecting it up, I'll upload a sketch to display something so I know if it works. After flashing the board, the display powered on, and that means that everything is connected right so far, so I can continue with the rest. There is now just one thing standing between these two thick wires and the quick charge modules. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be measuring each cell with this Arduino board, and that means that I'll have to connect each cell to one analog pin on the board. The voltages are a bit too high to connect them directly to the Arduino pins, so I'll have to connect some voltage dividers in between. I won't go in detail since I already devoted an entire chapter to it, but you can see the schematic on screen. Please don't connect anything to the Arduino until all of your grounds are connected and please measure each voltage coming out of the divider before connecting it to the Arduino because they must not be over 5 volts. If you mess this up, there is a possibility you will fry your Arduino board, so please be careful. This took a long time so I didn't record everything. You can see how I connected it all together and let's find Finally connect the last thing. The last thing to connect are these two fast charge modules and after they are connected you can mount the LEDs, the switch and the OLED display to the middle part of the case. Before closing everything together I uploaded my code to the Arduino and calibrated each measuring pin. After that I put the top cover and screwed in the four bolts to hold everything together. And that's it, the power bank is finally built. It took a while to assemble, but that's the thing I enjoy doing and I'm pretty happy about it. I like it so much because it can charge my MacBook and my phone at the same time. Also there are two ultra fast ports so if I'm ever out with someone, we can fast charge two devices at the same time. It is a bit bigger and it doesn't really fit into your pocket, but my main goal was to have a bit larger battery so that I can charge my laptop. I can't thank you enough for sticking to the end with me on this one and as I already said, I'm super happy to finally build this project because I needed a power bank for a really long time. These kinds of videos are something I enjoy doing the most and I would love to make them more often. If you want to help me get there, you can check out my Patreon, use the links below in the description, leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, let me know down below as well. Thanks.